scriptorium, literally, a place for writing, is commonly used to refer to a room in medieval European monasteries devoted to the writing, copying and illuminating of manuscripts by monastic scribes. Written accounts, surviving buildings, and archaeological excavations all show, however, that contrary to popular belief such rooms rarely existed. Most monastic writing was done in cubicle-like recesses in the cloister, or in the monks' own cells. References in modern scholarly writings to scriptoria more usually refer to the collective written output of a monastery, rather than to a physical room. A scriptorium was a necessary adjunct to a library. Wherever there was a library it can ordinarily be assumed that there was a scriptorium. Scriptoria in the conventional sense of a room set aside for the purpose probably only existed for limited periods of time, when an institution or individual wanted a large number of texts copied to stock a library once the library was stocked. There was no further need for a designated room. By the start of the 13th century secular copy shops developed. Professional scribes may have had special rooms set aside for writing, but in most cases they probably simply had a writing desk next to a window in their own house. By the time movable type printing presses were invented in the 15th century, the concept of a scriptorium was obsolete. San Giovanni Evangelista, Rimini at this church whose patron was Gala Placidia, paired rectangular chambers flanking the apse, accessible only from each aisle, have been interpreted as paired libraries and perhaps scriptoria. Their copious illumination, niches, five meter deep, provisions for hippocorse beneath the floors to keep the spaces dry, have prototypes in the architecture of Roman libraries. When monastic libraries and scriptoria arose in the early 6th century, they defined European literary culture and selectively preserved the literary history of the West. Monks copied Jerome's Latin Vulgate Bible and the commentaries and letters of early church fathers for missionary purposes as well as for use within the monastery. The products of the scriptorium provided a valuable medium of exchange. Within the scriptorium, there was typically a division of labor between the monks who readied the parchment for copying by smoothing and chalking the surface those who ruled the parchment and copied the text, and those who illuminated the text. Sometimes a single monk would engage in all of these stages to prepare a manuscript. By the start of the 13th century, monastic manuscript production declined because secular copy shops had developed to write for the laity. These were closely followed by urban bookshops circa 1250 that before the introduction of printing in the last quarter of the 15th century had already virtually replaced the monastery as a source for books. The individual traditions of scriptoria developed in incomplete isolation, to the extent that the modern paleographer learns to identify the product of each scriptorium and date it approximately by comparison with other datable productions of that scriptorium. At the same time, comparisons of the characteristic hand of scriptoria reveal social and cultural connections among them. As new hands developed and were disseminated by traveling individuals and by the examples of manuscripts that passed from one library to another, the illuminators of manuscripts worked in collaboration with scribes in intricate variety of interaction that preclude any simple pattern of monastic manuscript production. The physical scriptorium of Byzantium after the fall of the western half of Rome, the Byzantine or Eastern Roman Empire kept learning ablaze, and throughout its history, Numerous monastic scriptorium were opened for Bible, gospel illuminations along with copy shops copying numerous classical and Hellenistic works. Centuries before the West began them, records such as the monastic community of Mount Athos, a monastery releasing all kinds of illumination, of Cassiodorus at Vivarium, the monastery built in the second quarter of the 6th century under the eye of Cassiodorus at Vivarium in southern Italy, contained a purpose-built scriptorium, because he was consciously attempting to collect, copy, and preserve texts. 
Cassiodorus a description of his monastery contained a purpose-built scriptorium, with self-feeding oil lamps, a sundial, and a water clock. The scriptorium would also have contained desks for the monks to sit at and copy texts, as well as the necessary ink wells, pen knives, and quills. Cassiodorus also established a library where, at the end of the Roman Empire, he attempted to bring Greek learning to Latin readers and preserve texts both sacred and secular for future generations. As its unofficial librarian, Cassiodorus collected as many manuscripts as he could. He also wrote treatises aimed at instructing his monks in the proper uses of texts. In the end, however, the library at Vivarium was dispersed and lost, though it was still active circa 630. Of the Benedictines Cassiodorus's contemporary, Benedict of Nursia, also allowed his monks to read the great works of the pagans in the monastery he founded at Monte Cassino in 529. The creation of a library here initiated the tradition of Benedictine scriptoria, where the copying of texts not only provided materials actually needed in the routines of the community and served as work for hands and minds, otherwise idle, but produced a valuable product. St. Jerome stated that the products of the scriptorium could be a source of revenue for the monastic community, but Benedict cautioned, if there be skilled workmen in the monastery, let them work at their art in all humility. In the earliest Benedictine monasteries, the writing room was actually a corridor open to the central quadrangle of the cloister. The space could fit approximately twelve monks, who were protected from the elements by only the wall behind them and the vaulting above. Monasteries built later in the Middle Ages placed the scriptorium inside, near the heat of the kitchen or next to the calefactory. The warmth of the later scriptoria served as an incentive for unwilling monks to work on the transcription of texts. The Benedictine Plan of Saint Gaul is a sketch of an idealized monastery dating from 819 to 826 which shows the scriptorium and library attached to the northeast corner of the main body of the church. This is not reflected by the evidence of surviving monasteries, although the purpose of the plan is unknown. It clearly shows the desirability of scriptoria within a wider body of monastic structures at the beginning of the 9th century. Of the Cistercians the scriptoria of the Cistercian order seem to have been similar to those of the Benedictines. The Mother House at Sato, one of the best documented high medieval scriptoria, developed a severe house style in the first half of the 12th century that spread in parallel with the Cistercian order itself, through the priories of Burgundy and beyond. In 1134, the Cistercian order declared that the monks were to keep silent in the scriptorium as they should in the cloister. However, there is evidence that in the late 13th century, the Cistercians would allow certain monks to perform their writing in a small cell, which could not contain more than one person. These cells were called scriptoria because of the copying done there, even though their primary function was not as a writing room. Of the Carthusians, the Carthusians viewed copying religious texts as their missionary work to the greater church. The strict solitude of the Carthusian order necessitated that the manual labor of the monks be practiced within their individual cells. Thus many monks engaged in the transcription of texts. In fact, each cell was equipped as a copy room, with parchment, quill, inkwell, and ruler. Geek Stupin, or Gigo, the architect of the order, cautioned, Let the brethren take care the books they receive from the cupboard do not get soiled with smoke or dirt. Books are as it were the everlasting food of our souls. We wish them to be most carefully kept and most zealously made of the resaver after the establishment of Manazir Monastery by Stefan Lazarevich in early 15th century. Many educated monks have gathered there. They fostered copying and literary work that by its excellence and production changed the history of the South Slavic literature and languages, spreading its influence all over the Orthodox Balkans. 
One of the most famous scholars of the so-called School of Receva was Constantine the philosopher, Constantine Philosoph, an influential writer and biographer of the founder of the school, Scriptoria in Monastic Rules. Rule of St. Ferreal monastic life in the Middle Ages was strictly centered around prayer and manual labor. In the early Middle Ages, there were many attempts to set out an organization and routine for monastic life. Montalembert cites one such 6th century document, the Rule of St. Ferreal, as prescribing that he who does not turn up the earth with the plow ought to write the parchment with his fingers, as this implies. The labor required of a scribe was comparable to the exertion of agriculture and other outdoor work. Another of Montalembert's examples is of a scribal note along these lines. He who does not know how to write imagines it to be no labor, but although these fingers only hold the pen, the whole body grows weary. Cassiodorus or institutes although it is not a monastic rule as such. Cassiodorus did write his institutes as a teaching guide for the monks at Vivarium, the monastery he founded on his family's land in southern Italy. A classically educated Roman convert, Cassiodorus wrote extensively on scribal practices. He cautions overzealous scribes to check their copies against ancient, trustworthy exemplars and to take care not to change the inspired words of scripture because of grammatical or stylistic concerns. He declared, Every work of the Lord written by the scribe is a wound inflicted on Satan. 4. By reading the divine scripture he wholesomely instructs his own mind and by copying the precepts of the Lord he spreads them far and wide. It is important to note that Cassiodorus did include the classical texts of ancient Rome and Greece in the monastic library. This was probably because of his upbringing, but was, nonetheless, unusual for a monastery of the time. When his monks copied these texts, Cassiodorus encouraged them to amend texts for both grammar and style. Rule of St. Benedict The more famous monastic treatise of the 7th century, St. Benedict of Nursia's rule, fails to mention the labor of transcription by name of, though his institution, the monastery of Monte Cassino developed one of the most influential scriptoria at its acme in the 11th century, which made the abbey the greatest center of book production in South Italy in the High Middle Ages. Here was developed and perfected the characteristic Cassanese Beneventan script under Abbot de Siderius. The rule of St. Benedict does explicitly call for monks to have ready access to books during two hours of compulsory daily reading and during Lent when each monk is to read a book in its entirety. Thus each monastery was to have its own extensive collection of books, to be housed either in armarium or a more traditional library. However, because the only way to obtain a large quantity of books in the Middle Ages was to copy them, in practice this meant that the monastery had to have a way to transcribe texts in other collections. An alternative translation of Benedict's strict guidelines for the oratory as a place for silent, reverent prayer actually hints at the existence of a scriptorium. In chapter 52 of his rule, Benedict warns, Let the oratory be what it is called, and let nothing else be done or stored there. But Condichor translates both as stored and to compose or write thus leaving the question of Benedict's intentions for manuscript production ambiguous. The earliest commentaries on the Benedictine rule describe the labor of transcription as the common occupation of the community, so it is also possible that Benedict failed to mention the scriptorium by name because of the integral role it played within the monastery. Try the Mias of praise of scribes Abbot Johannes Try the Mias of Sponheim wrote a letter, De Laude Scriptorum, to Gerlach, Abbot of Deutz in 1492 to describe for monks the merits of copying texts. Try the Mias contends that the copying of texts is central to the model of monastic education, arguing that transcription enables the monk to more deeply contemplate and come to a more full understanding of the text.
He then continues to praise scribes by saying, The dedicated scribe, the object of our treatise, will never fail to praise God, give pleasure to angels, strengthen the just, convert sinners, commend the humble, confirm the good, confound the proud and rebuke the stubborn. Among the reasons he gives for continuing to copy manuscripts by hand, are the historical precedent of the ancient scribes and the supremacy of transcription to all other manual labor. This description of monastic writing is especially important because it was written after the first printing presses came into popular use. Trithemius addresses the competing technology when he writes, The printed book is made of paper and, like paper, will quickly disappear. But the scribe working with parchment ensures lasting remembrance for himself and for his text. Trithemius also believes that there are works that are not being printed but are worth being copied. The role of books and transcription in monastic life. The scribes often spent their entire life in an ill-lit scriptorium. Manuscript writing was a laborious process that could damage one's health. One prior complained in the 10th century, Only try to do it yourself and you will learn how arduous is the writer's task. It dims your eyes, makes your back ache, and knits your chest and belly together. It is a terrible ordeal for the whole body. The director of a monastic scriptorium was the armarius, who provided the scribes with their materials and supervised the copying process. However, the armarius had other duties as well. At the beginning of Lent, the armarius was responsible for making sure that all of the monks received books to read, but he also had the ability to deny access to a particular book. By the 10th century the armarius had specific liturgical duties as well, including singing the Eighth Responsory, holding the lantern aloft when the abbot read, and approving all material to be read aloud in church, chapter, and refectory, while serving as the armarius at Vivarium c. 540-548. Cassiodorus wrote a commentary on the Psalms entitled Expositia Psalmorum as an introduction to the Psalms for individuals seeking to enter the monastic community. The work had a broad appeal outside of Cassiodorus and monastery as the subject of monastic study and reflection. In his comparison of modern and medieval scholarship, James J. O'Donnell describes monastic study in this way. E. Aksam would have to be recited at least once a week all through the period of study. In turn, each psalm studied separately would have to be read slowly and prayerfully then gone through with the text in one hand and the commentary in the other, the process of study would have to continue until virtually everything in the commentary has been absorbed by the student and mnemonically keyed to the individual verses of scripture, so that where the verses are recited again the whole phalanx of Cassiodorian erudition springs up in support of the content of the sacred text. In this way, the monks of the Middle Ages came to intimately know and experience the texts that they copied. The act of transcription became an act of meditation and prayer, not a simple replication of letters.